Well, it's mid-March and still nothing on replacement parts for the Dynamics Research DRO. But uh, I'm getting sick of these parts sitting over here on top of the parts washer uh, for the scale. I want to um, put them off uh, to the side, but I figured I'd try cleaning them up first. I also wanted to take a good look and see if I can't figure out what the deal is going to be with this. There's a little broken piece right here. Um, I don't know if that's going to be a major issue or what. If I do decide to put the scale on the mill and just use the one good channel, I'm probably going to want to use the uh, x-axis for the table. And that's the longer of the two scales, which is this one, which has the, the broken part. But I'm wondering whether or not the other one, if that part is good, then I could probably swap it out and uh, get one good scale and one good to work on the one good channel. Not only that, but this is also the channel that uh, the pins were ripped out of the back of the plug. And I might be able to fix that, but I might not even have to if I end up just switching the whole thing. In fact, I wonder if I could just take this whole unit complete and put it in that scale. Now, I don't know if there's anything even different about it. Well, Try to clean this up a little bit. This stuff that's on here that the swarf is stuck to is really weird. It's it's really like cement. It's nasty stuff. And as if that isn't bad enough, it's all over the cable. And you know, a solvent clearly would be what I would like to use on this. Uh, dissolve and break down whatever this crap is. The problem is these this sensitive little electronic device right here with the, the little what's probably there is probably a photodiode and an LED maybe or something I don't know exactly but basically you get a little uh, you get a couple of little sensors or something there and you've got a reflective mirror on this side and then this whole thing rides along the glass scale and the glass scale has a bunch of tiny little lines on it so as the lines go past these little sensors they uh, they interrupt the uh, circuit or the light path which in turn translates to a tiny pulse being generated on one of the sensor and I think the reason why there's two sensors is because Two sensors are required for the for the uh, unit to be able to determine which direction the uh, the thing is traveling. In other words, if, if you just had one sensor, then no matter what direction it went in, you would have the same effect. You'd have a pulsed output. But by having two sensors, you can see which sensor sees a pulse first, so to speak, and that probably tells the unit that well, if this sensor sees the pulse first, it's the leading sensor or the trailing sensor, depending on how it's designed. I mean, I've only done a little bit of research on DROs, but from what I understand, this type of setup using a glass scale is the most accurate, and the, the higher-end DROs use this technology. So I don't know if you can see, but there's actually like a little mirror in there. And then on this side, there are those sensors. And I can't get the light to hit it just right, though. But they're right there. These are the uh, electrical connections to those two sensors right there, there and there. And you get these tiny wires. <laughs> so it looks like maybe these are actually the little units that send the light out. And the sensors might be actually on this tiny PC board back here. Well, I just tried cleaning this, and as careful as I was, I managed to drop a little hunk of crap down right on that mirror or that glass or whatever that is that's in there. There's still a lot of crud on this. So now I'm going to try and disassemble this and see if I can't get the electronics separated from this these metal parts so that I can really clean and scrub these metal parts. Those two screws here appear to hold this cover on. 
Oh, there's a PC board in there. Just wonderful. Okay, there's a plug in there. So that I'm that plug unplugs. There we go. That plug unplugs right off of that PC board. Well, that helped a little bit. Appears to be what's left of a gasket in here too. Right there. The four wires soldered to the PC board right here, they wrap down around and then they go underneath the PC board and I think they, where do they go? There must be a void behind there that they go in and then up through here. And we got a little tunnel that they're in right there. Well, that's interesting. I see the ends of the screws right here. So these standoffs thread in. There's a little tiny plastic washer there. Wow, this there's even swarf behind here. There's another one of those plastic washers right there. There's a big hunk of metal right there. It's amazing this still worked. That's like a little cover. Can't even tell what it's made out of. This is almost like a little dab of silicone. They must have used to keep that in there. More metal. All right, so the only thing left now is there's a tiny little bar that comes over to this clip. God help me if that ends up being a critical adjustment in the end. So if this little bar goes under this clip and it has to go under a very specific amount, then, uh, the heck if I'm gonna be able to figure it out. Let's get a little hook on the end. Okay, well that might be helpful. Can I go to put it back together and helping me figure out how that goes on? Right, so now I can really clean that up. Now that I've got this out and cleaned up a little bit. You can now clearly see what's wrong with this. This little, uh, this little piece right here, the one over here, it's, this piece is broken off. And I'm not sure if that's gonna be a special type of material. I'm not even sure what holds that in there. The way these are made, there's two pins that stick up on the back side here. I don't know if those are just pushed in there. Well, I don't want to come out. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the heck's holding those in there. So you can imagine that would make changing it interesting. This one also appears to be bent. I can't tell if those are metal. Well, what a pain in the butt. I decided to take the scale apart. Because... I know that there's a mess inside here from when I had it apart before and I could see. My thinking is by taking the scale apart, maybe I can actually, maybe that glass is made in a way so that it can be taken out and safely put off out of harm's way and then I can give this thing a good cleaning because this, especially over in the center here, you can really see the swarf. You can just see all this crap built up on there. <laughs> this ball of goop found on the end there. It's the remnants of this uh, foam. There's two strips of foam in here that are supposed to act as uh, seals. And they've just turned to, uh, well, it's beyond description what they've turned into. So this is 
almost like a rubber block on the end that the screws, a couple of the long screws go through. There's almost like a little rubber seal that sits in a groove in the top here. And then it comes around and turns in and goes down this groove on this block. So if I take that out like that, I can actually get this block out of the way. And I can actually pull this groove out of the, this, this whole rubber seal right out of the groove. There's the other block. Well, looking down from the top, it almost looks like I can see what looks like nylon screws that might actually hold this glass in here. Well, they're not accessible from the back side. The only thing I could surmise is that they're hidden behind this uh, foam. Let me see. Here's a spot where there's one right here. There it is. That's what it is. It's a nylon screw. Right, let me see if I can find the uh, screwdriver that's just the right width to fit in here. Find the right size blade screwdriver. I can just go right down here and chisel this all out. Scrape out this gooey thing. I wonder if these screws have a clamping effect on that glass scale or do they actually go through holes in the glass scale? That's just a clamping, clamping effect. All right, this next step may be ill-advised, but this thing's not doing me any good sitting here as a paperweight. And I don't think the guy on eBay who's trying to sell one that is a questionable, questionable operation for $165 is ever going to come down on his price. So if I end up turning this thing into a big paperweight, I'll just list mine on eBay with one working channel and no scales. Alright, so all I'm doing is I'm backing out these nylon screws. I figure just a few turns each is probably all it needs. Alright, that's the last of the screws. Let's see if this moves out. It doesn't budge. Question is, did they use some sort of adhesive in here in addition? Alright, without a doubt, I can see that these screws just clamp against it. They don't go through. Let's see if I missed any screws. Alright, I'm confident I've got all those out. Let's see if there's a second row of screws underneath this lower foam. Yeah, I can tell you right now, it doesn't look like there is. Nope. In fact, this lower foam comes out a lot easier. More of one piece, so to speak, because of the fact that the screws aren't there. The crap. Oh, there we go. There's a little wiggle in it. Loosened up. Okay. I don't want to come up. What the heck is holding this in there? Oh, the bottom. We've got some little holes here. Great. Can't even see what's in those holes because it's like they're sealed with something. Oh, wait a minute. Here's one right here. That's another one of these screws. <laughs> Oh yeah, great. That's a, uh, that's probably some sort of an adjustment screw. That was probably a critical alignment I just messed up there. Well, if nothing else, at least this video will show you what the inside of one of these glass scales looks like. It sacrificed its life for us to learn. I see if I was like Tubal King, I did a How's it work, series? Then I could justify tearing this apart. It's so weird that that's not coming out, though.
Oh well, guys, out of sheer desperation to clean this thing, I just resorted to using the parts cleaner um, without taking the glass scale out of this. And uh, I used a uh, wire brush to clean everything except the glass. And this foam had just coagulated into some kind of a real mess. It was really hard to get off. There's still little bits of black silicone here that I had scraped. I have to blow those out before I even think about putting this back together because if one of those falls on the scale <laughs> it's going to be a problem. This cover was so dirty that I thought this was black but it's actually a kind of a nice gunmetal gray color but it's also really scratched up from years of being abused. Uh, this is the underside. It's got a really nice finish on it. They uh, they really uh, made some nice equipment apparently back then. This company. Uh, the other thing that's kind of weird is you can't really see it down here, but down this end, on this bottom edge, there are some big divots and chunks in the uh, aluminum. I don't know what would have caused that. I don't know if that's... Best I can figure is that when this cover is clamped into position, like so, this front edge right here is actually open. And I think maybe it had been hit. And it must have been hit Well, this piece, which I haven't cleaned yet, which is supposed to ride in here, like it, this little piece that's broken off over here and this one are supposed to ride in this track right here. So this rides back and forth like this. So this is obviously a problem that this is broken. And I think what may have happened is that this may have not been operating smoothly. I'm not quite positive about that. But it's a, it's a mess. Um, as far as the glass scale itself goes, I used glass cleaner. Maybe that was a big mistake. But from what it looks to me, it looks like this glass is... The, uh, the little tiny lines that are not even visible with a magnifying glass, because they're so small, I think are actually etched into the glass. So I doubt glass cleaner is going to arm it. And it did seem to clean up pretty well. Well, anyways, I thought I'd show that before I uh, put this away. You know, so here's just a close-up of the damage on the outside of the top of the cover. That's what the inside of the cover looks like. And then here's just a good look at, you can still see that little bit of black stuff right there. That's almost like a black silicone that appears to have been used to glue in that foam strip that had completely trashed. And then there was silicone at the ends too. They really kept this sealed. I'm assuming that's for uh, to keep coolant, flood coolant. Uh, if, it, if this was used on a mill that used a flood coolant system, I suppose that's to keep the coolant out. <laughs>